welcome back to the channel so in this video we are going to be building a survey form so this is the form that we will be building okay and we are going to build all of this using html and css now this is part of the responsive web design on free code camp curriculum so so far i've done videos on this one learn html by building a cat photo app I've also done learn basic CSS by building a cafe menu, learn CSS colors, learn HTML form. I will put a link to those videos in the description video, in the description below, and I encourage you to check it out. So for today, we are going to be building this survey form. It's one of the certification project for the Free Code Camp Responsive Web Design Curriculum. All right, so let's get started. So what we are going to do, our objective is to build an app that is functionally similar to this one, which is linked here. So as you can see, this is it, but you don't have to build exactly the same thing, you know, something that is functionally similar. So like I said, for me, this is what I build. And this is what we are going to be looking at in the in this tutorial so you can build something different for me i love reading books so i build something related to books so if you love cats or dogs or if you love food whatever you love build a form related to that okay so let's get started now what we're going to do is we have these user stories here right <coughs> and these user stories are sort of the requirements that we will need to build the form. So by the end of it, we should, you know, have a page titled H1 elements with an ID of title. And we should have all of these in our form that we are going to be building. And at the end of it, we have these tests. Okay. So when we run, run these tests, for example, all of these should check. At the moment, I'm getting this X sign because I haven't done anything yet. So it's telling me that I don't pass the test. But when we are done building it, we should have all of these tests passing. All right, so let's get started. Now, the first thing we are going to do for an HTML uh, project is to do what we call doc type declaration. Okay, so that's going to be line one. And the way we are going to do that is to have this here, our angle brackets with our exclamation mark. And then we just write doc type and then we do HTML, right? Now, what this does is that it's going to tell the browser that this document is an HTML document. Okay, all right. Next up, we want to bring our HTML uh element this is going to be the parent element and every other element we have in our project will be in this html element okay so within this html element we are going to have uh a head okay a head element like this and we're also going to have a body element okay so opening body tag and uh, our closing body tag all right now before we move on let's have our uh let's have some meta element and this one is going to have a chart set with the value utf dash eight okay so now let's look at the user stories we have so we need to have uh okay let's also give a title so we need a title element if you're not familiar with the title element the title element is uh what shows up here in the tab right that is what is referred to as the title element so what we put in this title element uh is not going to show up on the preview here okay so we're going to have uh, 
uh, for me i'll just call it books books survey form okay all right next up i am going to link our html here to this css styles okay so what we want is that we are going to be creating our css here in this file okay and then we'll be creating our html here but we have to link our css to our html so for example right now if i just write body and say background color and give it a background color of green uh nothing happens because we haven't linked this style sheet here to our html so the way we can do that is that in our head element we're going to have link which is a self closing tag by the way if any of these is uh new to you is not familiar i suggest you check the description below for link to the previous videos i go over all of this so that you'll understand it better and then come back to this project okay all right so we have our link and the link will have a real attribute with the value style sheet and then it will have an href attribute which is going to be styles the name of this file here styles.css now watch what happens okay once i've linked this html and css together you can see that we have our background color green which means our style is working all right so for now i'm just going to delete this and uh, yeah let's have some space to work with so first we are going to build up our markup so we'll be writing the html of our page or of our form and once we are done with that we will have a look at styling okay all right so let's get started so we are be going to be building this form based on these user stories that we have here so let's take them the first one says you should have a page title in an h1 element with an id of title so the first thing we want to do is have an h1 element and this h1 element is going to have an id the value of the id is going to be title and we have to put some text here so for me i'm going to say favorite books survey okay now we see our heading here or the title of our form all right next up you should have a short description a short explanation in a p element with an id of description so let's have a short explanation in a p element so we have our p element like so and it's going to have an id with a value of description okay all right now for our description i'm just going to write thank you for taking our survey okay so when we look at our final product or our final page there's the title over here and there's the description okay just to give our user some context all right let's continue next up we want to have a form element which is going to have an id of survey form okay so below here we're going to have a form element and this form element we want to give it an id the value of that id is going to be survey form okay all right now next up inside the survey form you are required to enter your name in an input field that has an id of name and a type of text okay so first uh the way we're going to do it is as you can see we have uh one portion here we also have this one here and we also have this one here so we want to put all of these in a field set 
we also want to put these ones in a field set and these ones also in a field set so let's have our field set first okay field set and uh sorry and i'm going to create three of them i'll copy and then just paste it like so okay so now let's work on the fill set so we see our fill set here don't worry about the styles now these are default styles we will deal with them later so we need an input for the name right so first up what we want to do is we want to have a label before the input we want to have a label okay and uh, closing label elements like so and then inside that label we will have the text so the text we want to use is enter your name we want to tell our users to enter their name and then we'll have our input okay so mind you input is a self-closing tag so we will have the input we want it to have an id of a name we also want it to have a type of email sorry <laughs> a type of text sorry and then we also yeah so a type of text now another thing we want to do is we want to link this email to uh the label so We'll give the label we have here a four attribute, and the four attribute is going to be the value of the four attribute is going to be name. Let's just say name, okay? Or we can say name label. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can name it whatever you want. All right. <coughs> now let's move on to step five. Inside the form element. You are required to enter your email in an input field that has an id of email okay so we need another email another input field sorry so we're just going to do label the same thing label we have enter your email okay don't worry about the styles for now we will deal with it later and we we'll have input once again input is a self-closing element so this will have an id of email we also want it to have a type of email yeah next up what we want to do is we want to give this label a four attributes which has uh email sorry so this four attribute should be similar to the email attribute the id attribute we have here so this cannot be name label let's just keep it to name all right so to continue we want to create inside our form element okay so let's see this if you enter an email that is not formatted correctly you see an html validation error yeah so because we've added a type email if our user enter anything that's not a correct email let's say if you enter dd.com there's not a valid email so it will be flagged okay we'll, we'll see an example later on so let's continue okay inside the form you can have an you can enter a number in an input field that has an id of number okay so let's do this label all right and we want to have enter your age yeah and for age we want it to be a number so we use input 
input to have an ID of uh, age. We will give it a type of number, okay? And then for our label here, we'll give it a four attribute and the value of that four attribute is going to be, sorry, age as well. Okay. So for our user story eight, the number input should not accept non-numbers. Okay, so because we've given it a type of number, it's definitely not going to accept non-numbers. Okay, so now I'm trying to type A, B, C. It's not typing. But when I try to type, for example, 23, it works. Okay, so that's what it means. Either by preventing you from typing them or showing an HTML5 validation error. So now it prevented us from typing. All right, so for step nine, if you enter numbers outside of the range of the number input, which are defined by min and max attribute, you should see an HTML validation error. Okay, so let's give it some min and max attribute. So for min, I'm going to just give it a main attribute of uh, 13. And then we just give it a max attribute of, uh, let's just say 130 okay all right for the name email and number inputs fields you can see corresponding label elements in the form that describe the purpose of each field with the following ids okay so all right so each input should have a corresponding uh label we already have it but we are told to give it to give each one of them an id so for this we want to give it an id of name label like so and we want to give this one here an id attribute with a value email label like so for this one we're going to give it an id with an attribute number label okay so we are done with the first part as you can see we have our name here email here and number here okay there's still a few things we need to work on but let's continue so for the name email and number input field you can see the placeholder text that gives a description of instructions for each field okay so as you can see here we have your name your email your phone number these are like placeholder text that gives the user an idea of what to put there so we're going to be adding placeholder text as well so let's do i'm going to click here hold option if you're on windows hold alt and click here and then i'm going to also click here i'll just type placeholder once all right so for the name i'll just write your name for the email i'll write your email and as you can see it shows up here so the moment i start typing here okay it fades away all right where was i yeah so your email and here will have your h sorry okay next up what do we want inside the form you should give you should have a select drop down with an id of drop down and have at least two options to choose from okay so let's move on to the next field set so inside this one, we want to have a select attribute, okay? And uh, the way we are going to work on this select attribute is to... First, let's put in the label, okay? So we have our opening and closing label elements, like so. And then we want to put our select here. 
Now inside the select, we are going to have options. So option element, closing element, like so. And I'm just going to copy it and paste it. So for me, I'll have, you said you should have at least two. So let's just have five of them. You can have as many as you want, or at least you can have just two, depending on how you want it. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now let's give it some names. Okay. So first, what we want to do is I'm going to say how many books have you read so far this year so this is a survey to find out the number of books people have read so once again i'll select we are told should have an id of drop down so let's give it an id i'll give it an id of uh, drop down okay and then i'll say the first option, I'll just say select an option. Okay, that's what is going to show up for the user. Let me just put it into bracket like this. And then, or we can just do away with the brackets. I mean, it doesn't matter. And then the first option we're going to give them is none. So if you've not read any book at all this year, you're just going to say none. Okay. Or maybe you've read one, two, or three book. You can say, you can choose less than five. If you've read between five to 10 books, the user can choose five to 10, like so. And then if you've read more than 10 books, then you can say more than 10. All right. So, yeah, so as you can see how many books have you read this year? We say select an option. We have none. We have less than five, five to 10 and more than 10. Okay, so let's continue. Now we want to move to the third field set. All right, so in this field set, what we're going to do is we will be adding in the form element you can select an option for a group of at least two radio buttons that are grouped using the name attribute okay so before we move on to the next set let's do one more thing inside this second field set so what we want to add is we want to add a radio input right we want to add two of them but before that, let's add a P. So uh, let's do. I'm going to add a P tag here, a paragraph. And I'm going to say, what is your preferred book format? Okay, you want to find out from our users the format of book they prefer reading so we will need a label okay so inside this label we are going to have an input once again input is a self-closing tag so keep that in mind now for our input we want you to have a type of uh, radio and I'll give it a name let's just say uh, let's just call it pref format like so and I also want to give it uh, all right so let's let's continue so now the first one is going to be soft copy. Okay. And uh, for this radio buttons, I'm just going to copy and paste. So I'll do copy and paste because we want the type, the type is also going to be radio and we want the name format to be the same as well. So we want to have hard copy. 
okay now the reason why i want the name format to be the same is because that way you can okay you can only choose one at a time okay but assuming this had a different name so let's clean it and give it a different name then you can choose both simultaneously at the same time and we don't want that okay so let's take it back now let's give one more uh input for those who may prefer both people who prefer both hard copy and soft copy and we just say both okay all right so now you can just select either soft copy hard copy or both you cannot select all three of them at the same time all right so inside the form element you can select several uh fields from a series of checkboxes each of which must have a value attribute okay so now we need to also add some checkboxes so let's do that so for the checkboxes what we want to do is that we are going to ask them a question so let's just do p tag here and the question we want to ask is how do you choose the books you read and also want to ask them to check all the options that apply so check all that apply okay so this is a question let's put a question mark there now we are going to give them some options so the first option we want to give them let's add a label and uh, yeah we want it to be sorry <laughs> label like so okay so now what we want to do is that we want to make it a checkbox so input of course checkbox is also an input uh, it's going to have a type of uh, checkbox and it's also going to have a, we are told we should give it a value attribute right so let's give it a value attribute uh, let's call it choose okay and then the first checkbox option uh, before i do the first checkbox option let me just copy this so that we don't have to be typing it all over again so i'll just give <coughs> let's see two three four all right <coughs> so for the first one i'll say recommendations recommendations from let's say family slash friends so some people get their books through recommendation maybe bestseller list okay uh, you can also say author interviews maybe you had the author on an interview and you decide to purchase the book so author interviews and uh, you can also say book club recommendation maybe you are part of a book club and uh, they do recommend books to read and let's let's do one more for other so that if your option is not in there you can just choose other all right uh next up what we want to do is we're almost done we are getting there inside the form element you are presented with a text area for additional comments okay good so for this additional comment we want to put it here in the in the field last field set so we just say uh text area like so 
and uh, uh, looks too small so let's just give it let's give it a row some rows mm, let's say five okay and let's give it some columns let's say um, 30 right let's also give it a placeholder uh, we'll say any comments is there say any comments or suggestions okay and then I think that should be it sorry let's put this in the third fill set like so all right now next up what we want to do is inside the form element you are presented with a button with id of submit to submit all the inputs okay so what we want to do is we want to have a button so and, but it's going to be an input. We can also use a button. Uh, but the requirement says that we should use. You are presented with a button. Okay, so the requirement says we should use a button. But an input will also work. So let's just use an input. So a type submit. So the type submit will give us a button actually. Okay, input with a type submit. Let's give it a value. Uh, let's just say submit. Survey. So whatever we write here is what the text that will appear on the button. So submit survey. And let's also say we are told to give it an ID of submit. So let's give it an ID with a value of submit like so all right fulfill the user stories and pass all the test below to complete the survey give it your personal style happy code okay so we've already done that note be sure to add link uh to link your style sheet in your html to link your style sheet and apply this yes okay so we've already done that earlier all right so that should be it for the html part of it so let's get started with the css okay so bef before you even go to the css let's run the test and see all right so as you can see uh we've passed some of the tests but a few are also not passing so let's try and correct those ones that are not passing okay so first up your name should require input okay so we should make these inputs required okay so that a user cannot submit them submit the form unless they have given us this input so let me just shift this one to the right and we have more space to work with so the first one is the name input here so we we'll give it uh, required okay so we'll do the same for the email yeah your email should require input so we'll give it an attribute of required next up your number should be a descendant of the survey form okay so Yeah, we have an input that has a type of number and it says it should be a descendant of the survey form all right so what is happening okay don't worry we'll figure it out your number should have a max attribute to the numeric value we already have a max attribute so why is it giving us this uh error okay so let's try and figure it out 
So we have ID. Oh wait, I used IDH. It is expecting ID number instead. Okay. So let's instead of H, let's do number. So enter your number. Okay, so number. Uh, I think this should work. Let's also make it required as well. So we say required. Let's see the final. Yeah, so this phone number, not age. So yeah, enter your phone number. Let's make that. Let's see. Phone number. So phone number is not required. So we don't need to add required. Let's make it optional. So it's optional for them to add their phone number. All right, what else is wrong? Your number should have a place. Yeah, now that you've corrected it, that should pass as well. All your radio buttons should have a value attribute. Okay, so radio buttons. Where are our radio buttons? These are our radio buttons. So what we want to do is that we want to give our radio buttons a value. Okay, so let's give each one of them a value. I'm holding option here. If you're on Windows, you can hold Alt and then click on where you want to type. So value, let's give them all a value. Let's just say format. Okay. All right. What else? Your submit should have a type of submit. Okay. I think we've already done that. Oh, that's there's a spelling mistake. Ugh. Okay. So submit. All right, now let's try running the test again and hopefully everything should pass now. Yes, so completed one of five certification projects. So let me click here, we want to style it. Okay, so as you can see, everything is passing. Everything is passing. Everything is passing. Nice. But if you look at our form, uh, it's not really looking nice. Let's add some styles to it so that it looks like this. You see, this is looking really, really good. Okay. So next up, what we want to do is to look at the styles. Okay. So let me click here in this tab and then, yeah. All right, now we don't really need this one here. So let me shift it all the way to the right so that we can get enough space to work with. Okay, so now how are we going to start this? So this is the more exciting part in my opinion because we have the flexibility to do whatever we want. <laughs> we can go as crazy as we want. All right, so let's start with the body, all right? So for the body, let's do background color. Okay. And we want to add this color here. D1, D6. Okay. CB. All right. So I want this um, ash greenish color here. Now I'll just give it an alpha channel of 00. zero. So this sort of makes it. Uh, very transparent so let's continue we also need a background image as you can see i have a background image here so let's add that so i'll say background image and url so i need to find the url so i have the image here you can use sorry here you can use whatever image you want so this is an image from on splash if you don't know on splash is a uh, this website here that has a lot of images so you can just search and they are free to use you can just search uh 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 what do we want to search let's search library and as you can see you have all these books here yeah, so this is the one that I used. Okay. 
So I'll just copy the link from here. Okay. And I am going to paste it. So let me show you how to get the I think I forgot. Let me show you how to get the link. So I'll say library. Okay. So you click on the image that you want. Okay. Uh, open image in new tab. Now, once you open new image in new tab, or you can just copy image address. Okay. Either you copy image address or you open image new tab and copy the link. Either way, it will work. So let's continue. Or if you have an image on your PC that you want to use, you can use it as well. All right, so now that we've added the image, as you can see, it's not really looking good on the background. We, we can't even see the image, okay? So the way you're going to handle that is to use what we call background size. So let's do background size. And we'll give it a background size of 100%. All right, now it's looking good. And we'll give it, don't worry about the text, we'll deal with it. We'll give it a background repeat. We'll say no repeat. And let's give it a color of uh, FE, 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 a sort of a, so that's making our text a little visible so as you can see our text is now white and then we want to change the font let's use font family we'll say let's use tahoma i forgot my semicolon here yes all right now uh i want us to do the survey form so hash survey Form. Okay, let me tell you the reason why I'm using hash survey form. So the reason why I'm using hash survey form because our form has an ID of survey form. So let's go back to our HTML. And as you can see, where is our form? Yeah, there's our form. Our form element, we gave it an ID of survey form. Okay. And so because of that, if you want to style an element with an ID, you just use hash and then you write the name of the ID, in this case, survey form. Okay, so let's continue. Now we can do away with our HTML. All right, so let's give it a background color. And let's use the RGBA. So for the R, I want to use 59, 61, and 57. And let's give it an alpha channel, which is the uh, the transparency. Let's give it 90%. Okay. Let's do 95% rather. Yeah, this is okay. All right. Now, at the moment, when I stretch our screen like this, as you can see, the form keeps expanding and expanding. And when I close it like this, it keeps shrinking. We don't want that. What we want is we want our form to have a maximum value that after which that value is hit, it can no longer expand again. So we'll give it a maximum value. Let's say max width. And then we'll give it, let's say, 500 pixels. Okay. Let's also give it a minimum value. And let's say, oops, I forgot another semicolon. Let's say 300 pixels. Okay. So now watch what happens when I stretch it like so. You see, it's still, it doesn't expand. Once it reaches 500 pixels, it remains 500 pixels no matter how large the screen becomes okay but as you can see it's stuck to the left we don't want that so let's do let's center it you're going to say 
margin zero which will work for the margin top and margin bottom and then auto which will work for margin left and margin right okay now we have this zero and auto is centered nicely okay all right let's also give it some pardon just to have some space around the text so we'll say 10 pixels yeah it looks this this looks good now we have an issue here our h1 is on the left side we want it to be centered our text here is also not centered so let's work on that so the way i will do that you write h1 which is the name of the element you bring your curly braces so first let's give it a color of uh, rgba i want to use the same color as the background so that it will match so let's just copy it let me just copy it like so okay now i'll give it a margin top just so we have some uh, space at the top so i'll say margin top and we'll give it 50 pixels again i forgot another semicolon <laughs> you should not forget your semicolon so let me center align it by saying text align and i'll say center right now it's centered nicely but let's put some shadow around it so that uh it stands out clearly so say text shadow let's say three pixels uh three pixels two pixels and let's just give it a color f e f e which is like light white but not all the way white and uh yeah i think that should do now let's work on our description so for the description we want it to be centered as well so we'll give it a text a line of center we want a font size of uh, let's do just 1.1 rem okay so let's also do a color I'll just copy this because it's the same color we want to use anyway. Okay. And uh, let's give it a background color so that it sort of stands out. Semicolon once again. <laughs> All right. So the background color we want to use is uh, RGBA. Want to use white. So 255, 255. And I want to give it a transparency of 0 0.8. Okay. All right. But our background is covering the whole length of the page. So let's give it a, a max width. Let's say uh, 500. Let's also give it a minimum width of uh, 500. Now you see it shifted to the side. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to give it a margin. Margin of 10 pixels, 10 pixels and O2. So the 10 pixels will be applied to the margin top and margin bottom while the will be applied while the auto will be applied to margin left and margin right okay so next up let's work on the height a little bit let's hide let's add a height of uh, 25 pixels okay so that that should do it okay so one thing i also want to do is you see the edges are just sharp let's add a bit of border radius to it make it look uh, a bit nicer so 50 pixels 
yeah so it gives it this rounded corners which i think looks nice okay so we are moving on let's move on so now for the labels we want to give each of them let's just give them a margin bottom of uh, five pixels each okay all right and now for these ones let's just say name label so mind you our labels are called let me open it up so that we see what we are talking about so you see for our labels we give this one name label we get this one also uh where is it email label and number label right so that's what i'm talking about so what we're going to do is we say name label and we want to target the input inside it so say we we'll leave a space and say input we can also okay and then we'll say display so currently is want it to be one on top of the other right so like this so name and then the input below it we don't want it to be name and then the input next to it like it is now so the way we do that is to say display and make the display block currently it is uh it's working as an inline element but with this display block we can turn it into a block element we also want to give it a width of 100 percent okay this way the input takes the whole width let's also give it a margin bottom of uh, 20 pixels right let's give it a margin top of uh, let's say five pixels and let's just give it a height mm -hmm. let's see 30 pixels let's see how it looks yeah this looks good okay so now what we want to do is we also want to do the same the same thing that we've done for the input here we want to do it for this so we don't need to rewrite it we can just add a comma here and then write email label space and then input so with this we are targeting the input in the email label okay so now as you can see the styles is added to the email label as well all right so next up we want to do the same also for the number we know it's called number label inputs so we don't need a comma here since it's the last one all right so that is looking really good but uh, we don't want these borders around the fill set so let's take them out so the way we do that is to say fill set bring our curly braces and just say border none okay we also want to space them up a little bit so as you can see this guy here is too close to this one so let's just say uh, margin top 25 pixels there you go now uh let's add let's go back to our html and let's add some borderline here so let's add these lines right so that it sort of separate the the various pages sorry the various sessions of the form so the way we're going to do that we want to add one between the first two filled set so let's look at where so there's this ending of the first fill set and the beginning of the fill set so we just do hr like so and then we have our line and let's also do another one here we have hr like this all right 
now inside our css we just target that hr that we just did okay hr and we'll give it a width of uh, let's say 30 sorry 30 px okay so 30 is too small let's say uh, 70 hmm okay so instead of pixels let's just say uh 50 percent too small let's just say 70 percent all right i think this looks good okay so we also want to add let's add a class or an id to the second line uh, where is the second line? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, so here yeah, is it. We'll add an ID to it. And the reason why we want to do it is we want to apply a style to it that is not affecting the other line. Okay. So we'll call it, let's just call it second line. Okay. And for the second line, we want to target the second line uh, sorry yeah so the way we write it is with a hashtag second line and then we want to say margin so 30 pixels for the top and bottom and then o2 for the left and right <coughs> okay now let's work on the drop downs so drop down We'll have a display of block and then a height of 30 pixels let's give it a width of 100% uh, and then a margin of 10 pixels and zero okay then we want to work on the radio buttons and the check boxes so uh, one way we can do that is to do inputs so this is an attribute selector so input type and then we give it a radio So for example, if we say display block, yeah, as you can see, our radio and input elements are working as a block element. We will fix that later. And we also want to do the same for the checkboxes as well, not just the radio inputs. All right. Now, let's move on to the. Okay, so let's come here. And uh, one thing we can do is we can add a class to all of the radio buttons, right? We can add a class to them and just call them maybe, uh, maybe you can just say radio BTN. So let's give a class to the labels.
let's call them radio btn btn just stand for button you can do the same for the checkboxes let's just call them uh check boxes let's just say btn all right now inside our styles over here we'll just say dot radio btn dot style btn okay so now <coughs> it's working as we want it to all right so the next thing we want to do uh is to look at the <coughs> sorry the text area uh, let's also give it a display of block as well maybe we can make the width 100 percent For the margin, let's just do 20 pixels and zero for the left and right. Okay. All right. Next up, let's work on the... Okay, let's work on this placeholder here. It looks funny and out of place so to select the placeholder we do this two semicolon here and write placeholder so let's give it a font family of uh the homer can give it a font style of italic and then let's do a pattern of uh, 10 pixels all right so i think that looks i think that looks like that looks better than what we had before okay so finally let's work on this button that we have here so the way we are going to do that is to target the button so we can either do this input and have our type equal to button which is an attribute selector so no type equal to submit sorry okay so we want our button to look similar to what we have here with this nice green shade okay so i think the way you can do that first let's give it a width of a uh, hundred percent let's work on the height we'll say 40 pixels Okay, that looks good. Uh, let's work on the background. Sorry, background color, not background size. We'll say 719150. Okay, let's remove the border. We'll say none. Uh, I forgot the semicolon again. Okay, so let's give it a color. The black color doesn't look so good there. So let's give it a color of white, but not plain white. And it also looks very small. So let's increase the size a little bit. And say 1.1 REM. Also, let's give it a margin button just to have some space around here so margin button uh, 
uh, 15. I think 15 pixels would do. All right, so now let me see. Yeah, I think now it's looking the same as we have it here, right? So we are almost done. Yeah, so we are done, we are done. We are done with this uh, part of the project. I think we can move on. Yeah, so, so uh, like I said earlier, previously I did the ones for the, let, let me show you. Uh, when you come here, yeah, when you come here, I've done these ones. So one, two, three, and four. So I've done these four. So if not, you can go and have a look at them. And yeah, so this one was for this survey we have here. Okay, so that's what we've done now. All right, so I think that should be enough for today and uh, yeah we'll continue later